and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? All things revolution from a UK perspective. Right, hello everybody, my name's Mike and welcome back to the AnyRevs UK show, all things revolution from a UK perspective. I hope you guys are all safe and well and boy, the 2021 MLS season has started with a bang. Some highs, some lows. So let's get into today's show, shall we? Right, we've got a lot to kind of talk about in today's show. We're going to run it back and uh, to Gillette Stadium, where the Revolution 2 took on the Richmond Kickers in their first game of the season. We're looking back at some highs and lows of that game. We're also going to be looking at the game of the Revolution first team as they took on Chicago Fire at Soldier Field. We've also, during that review, we've got an in-depth analysis as I kind of look at the key points in that game and talk about how I feel the Revolution could have done better or applaud them when they have done well. We've got questions from the viewers as well, so I appreciate anyone who has submitted a question. We're going to divulge of who that Revimon was as well, so hopefully you guys will be getting more involved with that one, as so far no one has guessed. And we're going to be ending off the show with my predictions for the first game of the first team at Gillette Stadium as the Revolution take on DC United. We're also going to be divulging my predictions on top goal scorers, top assister, and where everything will fall at the end of the season so a lot to get into today so first of all we're going to be looking back at the revolution 2 game the revolution 2 took on the richmond kickers and boy it was a it was a little bit all last minute wasn't it so obviously announcements not long prior to the actual game going live but we found out that three of the first team players in Luis Casado, christian mapler and earl edward jones I said Jones again. I've said it again, haven't I? Earl Edwards Jr. will be playing in the Revolution 2 team. Uh, so I'm not going to spend too much time talking about this one, but obviously I will be giving my thoughts and opinions on obviously the Revolution 2 throughout the season. So just made a few notes, obviously, on the game. I mean, first of all, I mean, it was very disappointing. We had a, a large chunk of possession of the ball. I didn't really seem to do very much of it. I didn't really recycle the ball that well as well. Uh, just seemed to be trying to kind of almost copy what the first team do, I suppose, in a way, uh, with kind of this patient build that the, the first team have been uh, doing now. But but the recycling of the ball and just uh, the players themselves not really finding the space to utilise the ball as well as they could have done in that final third. So a lot of the ball, but not really doing a lot with it. Um, I've got noted down that obviously Lewis Casado, uh, you know, it was great to obviously see him back on the pitch. Um, but for me, he looked actually out of his depth. Uh, I felt he should have bossed the game and um, he definitely wasn't doing that at all. And, you know, there was kind of bits and, and, and you know, parts of his game which looked good. But for me, considering, you know, he dropped two leagues potentially below the standard he was supposed to be at, he should have been, you know, really kind of a more well-rounded game from him. And uh, I know he hasn't played a lot of soccer and I get that's the whole point of this. But yeah, I was just just disappointed with his overall performance and he definitely doesn't look like he's going to be first team ready anytime soon. I've got Earl Edwards Jr., not Jones. Um, obviously, they didn't really have much to do. I know he obviously conceded three goals, um, but he didn't really have that much to do, which isn't a good sign. The fact that, yeah, he didn't have that much to do, but he still managed to concede three goals. I suppose it, it, when you look back at them, could he be a blame for any of the goals? Potentially not. There's, there's maybe an argument on one of them. But I just, I just don't know. I think for me, Rice should regain his his spot. I mean, I, I don't think uh, Edward Jones is is any kind of way ready to kind of be push, pushing for a, a first team spot. One player that did play quite well though was was Maffler. Um, he well, I say played well. Uh, out of the three of them, he was the best. Um, he looked very eager to get forward, uh, possibly to his detriment at sometimes. I think he was too eager to get forward at, at kind of any time we had the ball and. You know, that could lead us to the same situation we had in the Revolution first team where we was giving them a little bit too much space. So that does need to be uh, addressed and addressed quickly. You guys, obviously, when coming to edit this 
episode um i've realized that the audio quality is really really poor so do apologize for that and i'll try and get it fixed for the next episode but hopefully you can kind of bear with me on this one right apologies for the rubbish sound quality that might be happening right now i'm not too sure um basically i've just been editing today's podcast and realized there's i don't know what's happened but the recording's kind of gone quite badly wrong so i've tried to start with as much as i can and i'm going to try and now pick up on the points that i may have missed so we were talking about the revolution 2 game uh, against richmond kickers and i believe i was kind of just talking about uh earl edward jones uh i believe <laughs> i think i think i was um so i kind of just kind of pick up from my, my notes from kind of what i was talking about there um and obviously, I basically was just going on about how I think that Roy should regain his first team spot uh, in the Revolution 2 team. And that I don't think, based on what I've seen from Oliver Jones, that he's, he's any better. But again, obviously, one game. Um, but to concede three goals and not really have anything else to do, it's it's not the best reflection on him. Um, the notes that I kind of mentioned uh, note down here is that Riviera was busy all game. He tried to get involved as much as he could do. I do think that possibly moving him centrally would uh, actually benefit the Revolution 2 team as a whole. So having him as the kind of player in behind the striker might be able to um, utilise him slightly better because out wide he was, he was drifting quite a lot uh, to try and get involved as much as he could do. Uh, very, very busy, as I said, and was, was good on the ball as well. Very useful player. Um, but I think because he was kind of cutting inside, it left a lot to be wanted out on the left and it wasn't then like another player slotted in and there was no like interchange between that that kind of um, the the players in the, in the attacking third. So um, I think it was a good game from him because we lost 3-0. Uh, Renix I have down here is that he was... Um, for me, it was a very, very poor game from Justin Rennix. Uh, uh, probably one of the worst I've actually seen him play. He 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 was trying to get involved and stuff, but I, see, I can't tell if it was 100% all... I wouldn't say it was all Rennix's fault. The Richmond kickers did a great job of kind of of marking him out of the game. They they were they were really tight on him every single time. They didn't give him an opportunity, and they, they obviously seen him as a threat because they, they were doubling up on him a lot, but he was... For me, pushed off the ball a little bit too easily. Um, uh, they were putting in a lot of tackles on him, and you know you could see it was kind of having an effect on him. So I think that's going to be part of his game that unfortunately he's going to have to deal with a lot this season. If he's going to be in the Revolution Two team for the whole season, he, you know he's he's one of the better players in in the league. So he's going to have teams man marking him a lot and, and putting a lot of pressure on him. So if he's going to perform. This season, he's he's going to have to kind of learn to deal with that, and and you know bulk up a little bit and be able to fend off the the, the attackers when uh, the defenders. Sorry, um, obviously Ryan didn't score this time round. So Ryan, unfortunately, mate, you know the drill. If you score that goal, I'll I'll give that surname a uh, an attempt. But for the for the time being, your name's Ryan. Um, good game from him. Looked good, dropping deep. Um, probably a little bit too deep sometimes to try and get the ball because he was trying to make something happen, uh, which then left us without a focal point up top. For, for me, I think the the front kind of three, as it kind of seems to be now, of Riviera, Renix and Ryan just needs to... Uh, the three R's at the moment because I'm pronouncing that surname. Um, they need to kind of work on their... Uh, interchange and stuff a lot better but uh, yeah I thought Ryan played really well uh, looked good um, was kind of starved a lot of the game but was trying to get involved where he could do and then another surname which I'm not 100% sure how you pronounce but I'll give this one a go because uh, it's slightly easier uh, Rosansky I think it was um, he's playing alongside Casado uh, he looked good he looked really good um, to be fair tried to control the game Um you know, is try, trying to get the ball and, and kind of move it, you know, just keeping the game ticking, really. Uh, looked like a very tidy player. Uh, if anything, I think, while Casado didn't have the, the best game at all, he had a, well, actually, he had a poor game. Um, I do think the fact that him and uh, Rosansky, or Rosinski, or whatever you pronounce his surname, sorry, I think they're very, very similar players, and they, they were kind of almost trying to do the same thing at the same time. And there were all at times they were finding the same space and very, very close together for a lot of the game. So I don't think it really worked playing them two players uh, as they were both very similar minded players as well. So um, 
I've got down the right hand side again with the name I should be able to pronounce, but I'm not going to attempt it. But we had uh, Presley and uh, Colby. Um, Colby looked really, really good. Uh, it's fair, both of them down that right hand side, very, very strong. Um, partnership seems to be building there as well, so that's pleasing to see. And um, yeah, really good points from both of them. Uh, Presley getting back to do defensive duties. Obviously, we had Colby on the overlap. It's really, really good work for them too down that that right hand side. Uh, defensive partnership looked good as well. Um, I know that's always quite hard to say when you lose three 0 but I think things are starting to grow. They were putting under a lot of pressure. Um, Actually, sorry, I wouldn't really say that much pressure, to be fair, if I'm being, if I'm being actually honest here. But just, you know, they're, they're caught napping a few times. But I think it looks like it's definitely building. Uh, Hearn, for me, looks like the, the better of the two at the moment. Um, I think mean, he looks like he, he really, really wants to get pushing for that first team. Obviously, he's not ready. Uh, but I think he's the one that's, that's really seeing that first team shirt and seeing what's, you know, that's, that's able to do. John Bell did it last season, you know, so there's the, the, seeing the players being transitioning from the Revolution 2 to the first team has got to be really exciting for them, Revs 2 players. So, uh, and I think he's definitely jumping at the bit there. Um, we've got the substitutes came on the game as well. So, Spalding, Costa and... Um, uh, Fujiwara looked really, really good. Looked to try and get involved in the game. For me, they should all be starting the next game. Uh, the out of the three, I mean, Spalding always looked pretty tidy on the ball. Very, very good, composed, uh, strong player, uh, very direct running. Um, Costa though was the one for me. He looked really good. Looked like he he wanted to grab the game by the you know scruff of the neck and just trying to get something to happen. Fujiwara, uh, Fujiwara, sorry, looked really good on the ball again. Nice, tidy player, quick feet. Looks like he can, uh, can create something. Uh, Buck as well. Looked okay. I didn't really get to see much of him, to be fair. He didn't get a lot of the ball, but when he did, did exactly what he needed to do. And then another player with a name, I don't even know how you pronounce this one at all, Michael. Um, again, limited minutes, can't really say much of him. Didn't really see him get much of the ball. But for me, that's the, uh, the Revolution 2 review done. Um, just a lot of improvements. Some positives to take away from that game, though. But yeah, a lot of work to be done for the Revolution 2 team. Right, I'm going to now start talking about the Revs versus Chicago game again <laughs> for the second time now because uh, the other bit just wasn't recorded very well. Um, not going to talk too much in this one. I'm just going to quickly run through my notes because um, obviously I've got another quite a lengthy in-depth analysis coming as well. So get prepared for that one. Um, I do, I've do. i noted down just really, really quickly, this is going to be guys, uh, that I noted that it's probably Bruce's strongest 11 that he could pick based off minutes and availability. Um, you know, minutes are, are the, the used in pre-season. It didn't really work, the McNamara pulse thing. Uh, and I don't think that was anyone's fault as such. I think both of them probably played as well as they could have done and I just think that the whole I think McNamara's first you know and, and instinct is to drive forward which again you can have a good box to box midfielder but maybe lacked sometimes in the defensive duties again I wouldn't really say it's his fault because it's not his his strongest part of his game Pulse the, you know to be fair they're saying that they're both both did okay defensively uh, at times throughout the match um, um, oh again I've been quite a I think I've, I like Matt Polster. I think he's a good, good, good player. I wasn't really too sure when he first got brought to the club, but no, he's he's definitely grown on me. But I, I think there's there's better options there. But to, you know, it's going to be hard to find what that right pairing is. But that one for me wasn't the one. It might be one. It might be the pairing for one game. You know, I'm not saying that that should never be happen again. But against Chicago Fire away, I think that was the wrong the wrong pairing for that one. I think we needed two more defensive minded uh, players. Um, uh, so I think we was caught short a lot of the time at the back and normally it's because McNamara is too far forward, too far advanced and stuff. Again, not really his fault, you know, but it's as such, I suppose you could say, he's, he's been drilled as more of an attacking player throughout most of his career. So um, maybe just didn't have the discipline to kind of always remember that he's got to hold back a little bit more. So um, Buchanan needs to massively work on his defensive duties. It's weird to think that somebody was so good at the back end of last season at right back switch him on the opposite side of the field and he just kind of crumbles. Um, not too sure what that's down to. Hopefully it was just a one-off. Obviously attacking-wise, you know, really, really good. Obviously as soon as you moved over to the right again, looked solid. Um, but yeah, just that hot first kind of 20, 25 minutes was just appalling. He looked, I don't, if Juventus or any scouts from any of them teams are looking at him, probably completely, you know, thought that this is not the right guy for us. But um, yeah, which is good for us. 
because uh, we know what Jimmy is. Um, but yeah, just poor, poor showing from him at the start. But grew into the game, got better, and obviously, you know, that he's, he's lethal sometimes when he kind of just goes on one of them amazing runs of his. Um, I put to Charlie Davis the other day on the outside of the box that um, could Adam Butts could score 15 goals, but I'm going to change that now. And I've got him down here for 20 goals, I reckon, this season. I think Adam Butts could get 20 goals th this season. Um, so it'd be interesting to know what you guys think on that one. Uh, Carlos obviously was pulling the strings, maybe not as an impactful game as, as normal, a little bit quieter than usual. Um, nice to see him popping up on the left. So obviously, didn't spend loads of time out on that left wing as such, but you know, good to see his versatility as we kind of knew that he could do. Um, but yeah, we're trying to get the game going, trying to get us yeah, into things. As I said, a little bit rusty for me. Um, final product sometimes, decision making was a little bit off. But, you know, he's still got it in his locker and can still pull out that bit of magic when he needs to as well. So um, nice to see him kind of, you know, kind of pulling the strings in, the, in that midfield position of his. Um, just obviously on the note of the defence as well, could tell that it wasn't a defence that spent a lot of time during pre-season together. It wasn't really what many were expecting as our first team, you know, our first back line of, of, of four, I suppose you could say. Um, Kester and, you know, even Kester had a bit of a, wobble here and there Andrew again you know he, he just could just tell he was a little bit nervy uh, as the game grew on they got more and more into it um, but yeah it was a little bit painful to watch it sometimes if I'm being honest um, and then I've uh, noted about Brandon Boy so for me I think Brandon Boy is a solid MLS right back I don't think he's ever going to be a world beater you know and that's no disrespect to Brandon at all I think he's a solid player and you know, I think he could be a really, really strong c contender in the MLS for one of the best right backs if he just worked on his passing. Because I think positionally wise, he's getting there. I think he's a little bit behind where I'd like him to be at this point in his career now. I think this is his third season of the Revolution. He's still got a few mistakes which should have been ironed out by now. So only time will tell. This season's really, for me, this is the make or break season for Brandon Boy. Um, but I think if he could just fine tune his passing, it would make him almost seem like a better player because sometimes he gets into really good position sometimes and then just that final ball just lets him down massively on a lot of occasions and then he's got to track back and he's caught out of position defensively and yeah it's just a whole mess so if he worked on that then you know maybe he wouldn't be caught out of position as often uh but yeah just just please brandon just Sort that out, and we were good. Obviously, it was great to see the team come from 2 0 down. We've seen shocking pictures uh, recently of the Schalke team being chased by their players, and it's nothing that any player should ever have to go through. Obviously, yes, being accountable for what you're doing on a full pitch, great. Should be held accountable by your your peers and all that kind of stuff, and you know your your boss. But but to have fans chasing you, that that's uncalled for. You should, there should have been never any threat of any violence or any physical altercation because um, you've play for a team and possibly had a bad game that you know that shouldn't happen but it's great to see the fight back I do think that under the reason why I've just brought that up is because I was thinking about if we were under Brad Friedel first game of the season go 2-0 down with inside the first 20 minutes that probably would have ended up as a 6-7-0 drubbing and then imagine that just imagine first game of the season after a pretty you know good run in the uh, playoffs to Start off against Chicago Fireball teams away from home and then to lose 6 7 now. Oh man, just no thank you. No thank you, Brad. Uh, it's a great fight for the team. The show's come back and it just goes to show their mentality and their players and what's been kind of being drilled into them. Um, had some really, really good passages of play in the game. Again, end product was, was the, the main issue. Um, but Butzka's looking a lot more with it now kind of getting what we're, we're about what and the team in turn have learned what he's about so that was really really pleasing to see um uh but on the, the flip side of that though there was a lot of time when we gave the ball away and kind of led to us being on the back foot more than we probably needed to i'm just going to put it down to it's the first game because again i've seen it on the other side as well i saw shikaru do the, the same thing as well so um I think that will just come with the more and more time that the, the team kind of gels together. Same with defensively, the cohesion will will just get there. Um, and then the kind of uh, I've got three more points left here. We'll just talk about Jones recently. Uh, I'm not going to kind of talk about the red card because that's in the analysis. Um, but even if I don't think that Jones got that red card and it's not rescinded or whatever happens, I think even if he played the full ninety, finished the match, for me, I think you know. Bruce, if he's not thinking about starting Mafra 
back up in the first team and, and give him the minutes. I think, you know, De La Garza or Bell possibly would have got that, that uh, option at left-back because, for me, Jones, I know left-back isn't his natural position, but he looked so solid last season. Again, not the world-beating left-back by any stretch of imagination, but just solid. Just played the game well, defensively strong, went forward where he needed to, had that burst of speed. But I don't know what happened in this game. But, yeah, just something was, was definitely off. And I think it is going to be quite hard for him now to get back into that first team again. I think, you know, it might be a while now before we see him him utilised um, in that first team. So, yeah, I do feel sorry for that, but uh, it's what it is sometimes. Then the next two points kind of really coincide with each other in a way. So I've got, the for me, Gustavo Bo just was invisible for large, large chunks of the game. Um, and then I kind of started thinking about possibly, and I watched the the playback and kind of didn't really mention it in the analysis, I don't think. But for me, when you when you actually drill down to it, I think Gustavo Bo is a player that likes the ball fed into him in, in position. He's, he's deadly in these positions when he gets into the right ones. He, he is lethal. But he's not really a player which will pick up the ball from the halfway line and run with the ball. He likes the ball played into him when he's already kind of in a dangerous position or around that area. He doesn't really like, you know, picking it up anywhere outside of that area. He's got a decent delivery on him, so he is out on the wing, but he won't drive in as such from that wing and try and, you know, score a goal from there. He, he'll, he'll either be in the box already or across the ball into the box. When watched it back, I realised that Again, we'll take away the aerial presence and dominance of what we've noticed that Adam Butts can do. I don't know why it took us a season to realise this, but take that out of it. Them two players realistically are very, very similar players. Adam and Bo both like the ball being given into them in, you know, positions. They're both decent hold up. You know, they they like they they've, they like to hold up the ball and bring other play ball into play. But they won't pick up the ball and just drive at defenders. They will always be in and around that box and they want the ball into them. So, does while I do believe that Bo is more suited to his game, what we're using him now, as almost alongside him, he's still slightly deeper of the two, but now it's kind of, you know, we're letting kind of Carlos just do what Carlos does and and we're just dealing with Bo being slightly more advanced now. But I don't I don't think that Bo would have scored that goal last season because I don't think he would have been in that position. I think he would have been slightly deeper kind of on the edge of the area. So the goal that he scored, I don't think it, that position, he would have been there or thereabouts, which is great. But I think Carlos struggled to find him at times, which led to Gustavo going missing for large chunks. But then you look at Kizza. Comes on, completely different type of player, direct, uh, looks like, you know, naturally kind of an aggressive, not in a bad way, but aggressive player, uh, strong, athletic. Um, and that, that really made, he, I mean, he deserved that goal, to be fair, because that run was great, just such well-timed, powerful header as well. Um, just really deserved that goal. Um I think he complements one of them. I'm not too sure which one of them. Probably Adam. Better up front if, we, if we're going to have a two. That's the way we are playing. I do think that Kisser might be the, the better option there, but that's just my opinion, guys. I don't know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments, but definitely one to think about. And that pretty much wraps it up um, for that, guys. Uh, I have now got a rather large in-depth analysis. I did tell you it was going to be in-depth. Uh, kind of apologise because it's a little bit rough and ready. It's the first time I've used it, so apologies. But hopefully, you kind of got it going going for, and over time, it will become nice and smooth and fancy and all that kind of stuff. But uh, just to warn you guys, go and get yourself a drink, a nice little snack, set yourself in a nice, comfortable chair, get ready because this one is a long one. So I'm just going to review the ten minute highlight package from the game against Chicago Fire. It's um going to be me kind of analysing kind of where I thought the revolution could have done better in some aspects, but also kind of highlighting things that they did really, really well as well. So um, it's going to be quite interesting to see kind of, you know, areas of key moments that the revolution possibly could have took slightly better opportunities here. Um, obviously, we all know it's a very fast-paced uh, game here, but if we just kind of uh, stop it just around about here, 
So, oops, so we can see that we've got Carlos on the ball here. We're going to slow this down as well, just so I can kind of explain slightly better kind of what we're kind of uh, looking at here. Uh, so Carlos is on the ball. He's picked up the ball. And now I've uh, got Carlos in this position here. Now, for me, you probably naturally think that for, from this position here, we've got, uh, we've got an opportunity here to play the ball in. I think like Starvo Bow in the middle of the pitch here. Um, but but Carlos doesn't do that. He, he does spot the opportunity here. We've got a player open, so he passes the ball into the player here. And now from this point here, we've got you know this the players pick the ball up, and he's he's kind of got three men in and around the area, you know, looking to press on. This person's being marked in the box as well. Gustavo is not that 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 available. There is a ball into him, then you can obviously you know, look to maybe use Gustavo's strength and uh hopefully you know could maybe uh something could happen from that but we've got i believe this is Tycho Buchanan over here and as you can see there's there's quite a good amount of space um uh, for, for me the, the best ball option here would be to knock this uh out over to to the player on the left hand side there i think it's Buchanan i'm not 100 not sure but that that would be for me because then you've got the space for Buchanan to obviously either then you know have a look what what the, the player in the middle has done um because I don't think the best option for me is to have a go from here. Uh, but, you know, we kind of works the space a little bit. See, does see an opportunity. And, you know, it's not far off. It, it's it's worth the keeper. It's kind of a shot. I'd probably say maybe on target. But uh, at the same time, I'm not 100% sure if, it, if that is even on target. We're going to fast forward, obviously, four minutes on the clock here. Um, and we just kind of pause it here. So, for, for me, I mean, Buchanan is... is Sorry, this is obviously a new bit of kit for me. I'm, I'm sorry, getting used to it. We'll get better. Buchanan here, you know, he's he's caught in no man's land. He got, I mean, Dewan Jones has, has got to come and get this player here. He's got to start getting closer. And if we just kind of go back a little bit here, can I just go back uh, just a smidge? So I believe at some point, Ty Jones does notice him. He does give him a little bit. Let's just get rid of that green line. So Tajo knows, I think he knows he's he's there. I think there's a, a one point when he, he must know he's there. He's got, he's got to see him in his peripheral here, that he knows the player's there. And Buchanan, uh, you know, he's, he's, got to, he's got to, this is a big part of his game he's got to work on. So he, he's reacted now, but he's reacted late as well. He's reacted late to the situation. The ball's been played through, really, really good pass there. And then also from this as well, you've got, you've got to start thinking about what the defence is actually doing here because we've kept, you know, a fairly straight line here. Defensively, it's quite a, a decent line. So we've, we've allowed this player over here to, to straighten an offside position thinking that obviously, you know, nothing's going to come from it. So if we just have a look at the opportunity here. So we've got a kind of player kind of, kind of tracking him back there. I believe it's Andrew Farrell uh, that's kind of, you know, picking the player up in this, this corner over here. Um, oops, get off my screen. Uh, but he kind of doesn't follow the plan. And he's in an offside position, so you probably think it hasn't got much to worry about. But because of the way that this ball's played in here, now we think there's an opportunity for this player to be offside, but it, it can't be because the ball's being played back. There's not really much Matt Turner can do there, and it's one nil Chicago fire. Not the best start. Less than five minutes on the clock, and Chicago are already one nil ahead. Um, possibly the worst start to to the season, let alone a game. That you could possibly hope for um you know all that kind of preparation and stuff before the game and you know from such a strong defensive performance uh, that we had on on a lot of occasions last season to go one nil down in the first game of the season away from home with the first time that their fans are there also to chicago fire as well of all teams just look ty Jones is 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 just caught on his heels here he's got to be aware of that situation um you know he's he played right back last time round, so maybe the fact that he's on his left was was the thing that caught him off guard here but but it's, there's no way this can be offside it's a backwards pass there's not really a lot that that i mean try to pick stand up just in case but there's, there's no way he can get that called offside it's a really well worked goal from show but it's very very poor defending uh, which made it look a lot better than what it was in my opinion from show uh, set pieces now we know that the revolution haven't been good at set pieces for for quite some time now so we're just going to slow this down once more so set up quite nicely though if you look here so the ball's just be, uh, just about to be played in now and from that you're kind of thinking yeah okay there's not really much going on there
But if you look here, to, to me, there is, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here actually as well. If you just look here, there is definitely an extra person and only two defenders. We've got, we've got the player the wrong side of, uh, I think I think it was possibly, um, was it McNamara there that was possibly on the wrong side of his player? The ball comes in. And again, here, you've got another player leaving his position to kind of come and defend here, which again, isn't the bad thing to do. But you've left that player open then. You've, you've left you've left the man open. So there's no saying that, that, you know, this defender hasn't really done anything wrong here. So I think it's Kessler who comes. So Kessler's now rushing out to that defender. But also at the same time, you've got two revolution defenders here going for the same ball at the same time. And then that means that you've got the player, you've got another player that's uh, over here. It's now a big gap open up in front of him. He's got to come over and, and do something. He can't just be left with a massive gap. So he's now left that man at the back post. And where does the ball go? To the man at the back post. And it's another opportunity. Um, luckily this time, you know, he snatched at his shot and it came to nothing. But But not the best. Again, you know, only less than 10 minutes on the clock. And just look here. So it's, um, I think it's, it's not, Kess is it Kessler? Yeah, Kessler goes in there and it's, it's just, Polster has to kind of cover the gap there. So you've got Jones and Kessler going for the same ball. It's already kind of been, kind of, you know, there's some competition already there for the ball. The, the, the players win it, which is, just happened, but you've left a, a player open. We've got a player on the line, which has kept him on side there. And luckily, as I say, he's put it either side of the post. So again, working down the left-hand side as well, which is, um, which you know, wasn't actually our problem side, which is obviously our right-hand side. It wasn't where I'd say a lot of the situation or the the problems came for us. But again, Taijo nowhere near doing enough defensively to kind of help out here. Slowly jogging back, but not really getting back enough. Now kind of in kind of the right situation here where he's he's kind of you know he's he's started to realise that something's coming but he's he's just jogging. It's not not enough here for me. Just jogging into kind of some open space. But he, he can see this he can see that look I mean look at the space between these two players here. If anything's played in that in that in here in this kind of gap here, uh, I mean Tyjones also kind of running towards the defender at first as well. Then he's got to change direction. So it's not ideal at all. And I mean, it's just an easy finish again once more. And that's 2-0 up. 2-2 two, two for Chicago. Um, I mean, it wasn't bad enough that we went 1-0 down within sort of the first five minutes against Chicago. The fact that we're now losing 2-0 uh, so early on in the game. Uh, against a team, you know, a defence which, defensive unit last season was was pretty good. Um, but yeah, just not good enough here from 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 Ty Jeremy. I, I don't know if you can really hold uh, Dewan Jones to account. But again, I suppose in a way he is because look at look how out of position he is there. He has not got kind of any kind of coverage on his, on his man here at all. Balls played in, but Ty Jones just there, just oh, just that switch direction just keeps him. You know, again, once again on his heels and just not good enough at all from the uh, Revolution defence. We need help from the midfield a lot. We can't just, you know, if the back four can't just keep contain uh, people's attack. We need help from all over the park. And um, which said, which considering he has such a good end of the season as right back, I don't know if it's the fact that he was over at left, but uh, yeah, it's just quite concerning. Again, just a really, really just easy bit of play here from Chicago. From from nothing really. Dewan Jones into Buchanan. Buchanan. Back pass directly into the fire play. I'm not too sure what's going on here. I think I think he's kind of been rocked a bit. Buchanan's Buchanan's uh, confidence has been rocked there. You know, you can tell he's he's a bit nervous. And, and Bruce Arena, you know, kind of noting that some something's going wrong here. And we can just make a change. Uh, not long after this, to be fair. Kind of not the best view of this uh, kind of situation here. But Gustavo Bo gets the ball in, plays into uh, Adam Butska. Uh, but to go away from the defender, does quite well there, to be fair. I think, you know, the um, the more confidence he gets, the kind of better he makes of these opportunities. Because for, for me here, let me just pause it here, just a little dink over over there would, would have done the job. 
Um, and I kind of think this is possibly what Adam might have been looking to kind of do here. Um, but he, he kind of, because it looks like he's, it look, just look, if you look closely, it looks like he's trying to get his foot under the ball, uh, but also with a bit of power. Um, but yeah, just, just hits it too low and too direct at the goalkeeper. Corner for the revolution. Got it still on slow motion here. Good leap there. Look at that. Adam Butzka. And he's marked as well, guys. This is what we've got. Um, a lot of people are saying this is a bit of a cheat code, the Carlos Hill, Adam Butzka. But to be fair, Adam here, I mean, he's not really he's not really marked from the off. The players are letting him kind of have a run on him. So I believe that Schro must be doing the zonal marking, um, which worked in our favour here. Adam's obviously got a good leap on him. And to be fair, there's nothing really wrong with that from from the only downside that really Schro did on that one is that they stood off. They've obviously got zonal marking, I believe. They're not, they're not kind of doing any man-for-man -man marking because, as you can see from the way they've lined up, they're just marking a zone. They're not picking up individual players. It seems like there's some on the edge of the box. But you've you've also got like two players here that, that aren't being picked up at all. And it's something that we possibly could have utilised and, and looked at. Uh, kind of, you know, maybe utilising this slightly better than, than we did on, on some aspects. But... But good, good leap from Butsky again. Not really much the defender could do. Just a great leap from him. The goalkeeper planted, and uh, obviously, <laughs> luckily, we're actually kind of back in the game very early on. It's a great response from the Revolution, and it was just good to see the fact that we kind of didn't take us too long to get back into the game. And um, I mean, I'm not too sure what the Shogo Fire fans were thinking here, but uh, just look here. Just, just too many options for the Revolution. Really, You've got two players at the back. I think that's Bowen. And Buchanan there, uh, Butska just kind of has the run, but again, it's just a standing leap. It's not even like the momentum of the ball. Sorry, not the momentum of the ball. The momentum of the ball did help a lot. It's not like the momentum of his jump actually had any kind of uh, advantage towards him in this attacking play because it, it wasn't. It, that's not what was happening here. It just a good leap and, yeah, just bigger and stronger than the defender, I think, in that case. And uh, Revolution back on the scoreboard and the scores at 2-1 are great. Confidence booster for, for Adam Brutsky. Great interception there from the Revolution. So it's good to see that, you know, midfielders reading the game. I think that was, is it Tommy Mack who does that? Over to Adam Brutsky. Brutsky finding the space here on the left. This is when Carlos has now moved over to the left high journey. The, and just a tame shot there from Carlos. I mean, for me, this is the one kind of point of the game where I'm thinking Carlos has got, I mean, he's, he's, got, he's got it in his locker here. And, and look, so the the moment he releases the ball here, for the moment he picks up, I mean, there is there is options. There's an option into to there. There's an option potentially here as well. Oops. You know, there, 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 there is other options on. There, there's the, the alternative, kind of, you know, just knock the ball over here slightly. That's that's a poor line for me. It's a poor line. Just knock it over here. Adam's, Adam's running already. You know, that's another option there. Not too sure. I'm, I would have thought Adam would have given him a shout, but but who knows? But yeah, other options there. Not not the best from from Carlos in that situation. Definitely more uh, options available for him down the right hand side. Now Tyson just causing problems here, just putting the pressure on the defender. Just a simple throw in. This is guys. Just a really simple throw in. Good actual work from Brandon by here because sees the space, throws the ball into the space rather than directly the player. Just Tyson just out muscling his defender and Gustavo Bow's movement here. I'm not too sure what's going on with the... They can see there's potentially going to be an issue, in, but but look here. Gustavo has not really got anyone in or around his area picking him up. So once the ball's played in here, I mean, he's got the... He's just got time and space to kind of think about what he's going to do. And uh, it takes the right option, and that's that's both by strikers on the score sheet game week one, which has got to be a massive confidence booster for both players. We're back at level picking here as well. 2-2 two, two now, and... Uh, I was hoping that we'd kind of kick on and build on the momentum of this because the fire have got to be hurting right now. They've got to be hurting. They were just 2 0 up and within inside the space of what, what, 10 minutes then? And now back to 2 2. But look, really, really good throw in here from Brendan Bow, just down the wing. Tajo doing well, using his strength, and Bow just not being picked up by any Chicago Fire defenders. Uh, just a really well worked goal. Yeah, and as the commentator said, a very easy finish for, for Gustavo Bow there. Now, again, just a little bit of kind of ping-ponging around here. Dewan Jones getting caught. Just caught there. Just 
I've, I've caught in two minds for me. I mean, it's not not the best ball. I'm going to be honest. Uh, it's a little bit of a sloppy bit of play here, but I think it's uh, you know Carlos there just kind of hoofing the ball. Not too sure why he's kicking in that direction. I mean, Dewan was in a bit of space, but again, caught in two minds. Um, for me, Kessa does okay here. You he, he can see what Kessa's trying to do. He's trying to show him outside. He doesn't want to show him inside the box. So he's constantly running at that angle to try and show him. Um, and just a nice, easy save there for Matt Turner. I think that was a, good, a, a, a decent bit of recovery work there from Henry Kessler because he was trying to show the player outside. He wasn't trying to allow him inside or, you know, he's going to be near post if he was going to be taking any opportunity or any shots at Matt Turner and hopefully Matt Turner will be able to deal with those, which, which he has done. Another opportunity of showing fire again, just once more, just not really having the you know the options when when we're getting caught on attack here. I mean, look at this. I mean, it's it's oh, I've gone a bit too far there. I mean, hit from this situation here, we've got a four on five situation, but you've got two you've got two centre backs here. So you've got Kessler and, and and Farrell that are already already there. This player here realistically they, they need to be dropping in and filling in this gap here because there's no point them running keeping central for me that, that there's no point to it because you've got two defenders already covering which means that because he's followed that tracking run andrew's now noticed the players free but it's it's a little bit too late you just try and get over there to closing down but again the, the person's already got an option to uh to decide what they're doing with the ball another mistake here from the revolution is the fact that they've just to just not get enough bodies back for me because now we pause it here it's technically a five on five situation and then who comes coming in just just rolling into this, the shot with absolutely nobody tracking back whatsoever and luckily the hit is just hit miles wide and not very handsomely at all revolution attack to say we've got uh, carlos here now on, on the uh on the left hand side and let's just note here as well guys that that this run here from dewan jones just look at what this does here. For this is this is something that the outside backs um, need to be doing more of sometimes. Because I, again, I suppose I mean it's a position I've played. Left back is the kind of position that I play for a, a lot of my my career. And this is one thing that you still you do see it, but you don't see it enough, I don't think. But we're just going to slow this down. But look what Dewan Jones is here. So he's, he's it's kind of like I mean in his head he's probably running into that space, thinking that I'm making an option for Carlos, which is what he is actually he is doing. But he's also because he's because he's doing this, this defender here. He's got to go with him, which which then. Because he's got to go over to cover to one just in case the ball gets played there, he just leaves this massive forty. Oh, I don't know what's in there. Forty nine degrees. That's not what I meant to do. I thought I was just doing a triangle. Uh, forty nine degrees, probably more than that as well. Just a lot of space. That's what I'm trying to basically create here. Leaving a lot of space for Carlos. And when you leave Carlos with a lot of space, sometimes you know that can be very, very dangerous. I'm not too sure why teams do it. Carlos, great spot there from him. Over to Tajon. Tajon, nice little bit tricky there. Comes back inside to his left hand, uh, left left foot, sorry, not left hand. Uh, and a good save for the goalkeeper. I think, again, with a little bit more confidence here. Vian started the game. I know he's got an assist on the board at the moment now, but I think a few more games in. And uh, I think Tajon possibly is putting this one into the because he's, he's gone he's gone near post here obviously when realistically he should have been looking to go obviously in this top hand corner that's not bad that isn't uh that, that top corner there but he's kind of con, kind of central and and a really decent height for the goalkeeper so uh but still a nice bit of play from from the revolution uh still putting under pressure ball comes in once more and we're looking for that at this point here i was thinking is this going to be that identical goal that carlos scored when he hit that on the volley um Unfortunately, it wasn't meant to be. Good defensive header away there. And uh, just unlucky. I think, again, more confident Ty J. McCann possibly sort of that top corner. But good to see that we're kind of getting into these uh, situations. Free kick now for the uh, Revolution. Obviously, Magician on the ball. Again, defensively, I think I can't. you can't really say much wrong from the Chicago Fire. The picking up players, it's just that Adam has just got such a good standing leap. Um, that I think this is got this is going to be. We need to utilize this more because I don't think we utilized it at all, um, or if we did very little last season. But just look at this again. It's not he's not using any momentum from the run. That is a standing leap that he's beating the defenders with, and again, just defenders not kind of really putting them under too much pressure in a 
free header probably should have at least made the goalkeeper work on that occasion. Another highlight here for the Revolution. I realise that I've got it zoomed in, that's why we're not seeing the whole picture here. Uh, but again, just here, look, Carlos on the ball. And it, it, he's cutting inside here. Now, obviously, you've got a lot of over 68 degrees of space here for Dewan to be played into. But sometimes, when when the easiest option's on, sometimes that's not always the best one. And it's not far off, to be fair, from, from Carlos. He's cut back inside. I think that a lot of players were probably thinking that he could have gone over to Dewan, so maybe they could have shifted the weight. I think that's kind of maybe what Carlos's mindset was in, but... I think that probably was the better option there because then we had a lot more time to kind of get players in the box and, and maybe work a, a better opportunity. But sometimes, you know, you've got to just trust what Carlos is doing because he does pull magic out of his magic hat. Last minute of the uh, first half here. And we'll just kind of rewind that back and just kind of watch the uh, the cheat code once more. So we've got uh, Carlos's ball in. And again, just another standing leap and he's won it once more. Obviously, that one there, I think, yeah, I, I do believe he's probably gone for a shot there, but, if, you know, the fact that kind of had a player kind of running at the back post, I think it was Buchanan, uh, could be, you know, good things that we could be working on in the future because he's going to have that opportunity to just nod them balls on into the path of somebody on coming in. And we just really need to be utilising that better in the, uh, I mean, throughout the season because we've been not the best at defending set pieces, so why don't we make it our kind of thing of where other teams struggle to defend against our set pieces. Talking about struggling against uh, set pieces, we've done quite well there. We've defended well. I think the fact that we've kind of, you can tell we've been working on because we've got, I believe that was Adam Butzka uh, back, which is a great person to have in the in the attacking and the defending box when you were you're, you're defending set pieces. So it's good to snuff that one out. Here, I'm just going to slow this back, run this back and slow it down a little bit, guys, as well. So for me, this is a good passage of play as well for the Revolution. Nice ball in here and it's a nice kind of little flick there. Just real, real confidence you know, oozing out of the Revolution players at this point. Nice footwork. Again, nice interlinked play. But unfortunately, it just kind of kind of runs a little bit wider than I think he thought, think he thought it would do there. The one's cut inside here. Cuts but to the byline. Just an outreach foot there. Without that, I think that was a Gustavo Bo goal because he was calling for it. And just look here. It's just that little tap that's needed. And maybe a second, just too too late from Dewan. Let, let's actually just slow this down. Can you slow it down? I think I'll slow. Keep it look there, like here. Uh, yeah, just, just slightly ahead. So he's got this space from... from from, from here, really, the ball could have been played in here. The defender is already kind of moving in um, in this direction. So his kind of weight is, is already distributed over there. It's just a slight second earlier and maybe a second. I think even less than that. Like, and that, that possibly would have led to a, to a goal for the Revolution. But really, really good to see. Good confidence from the Revolution. Another set piece to defend. Not the best, that one, but again... We'll take those. That's a nice, easy save for Matt Turner. Can't really complain too much with that one. Here, again, now we can kind of see that we're shaping up. We've got, we have got a four on five situation, uh, six, sorry, situation. But we can see the fact that the wing backs are trying to get back now. But we've got this situation where we've got two, well, three resolution defenders in kind of the same uh, position here. And we've got a player which is obviously looking to kind of create some kind of overlap. Um, and no one really kind of gets over there to kind of cover it. Luckily, again, it's kind of just dealt with quite easily and we put them under enough pressure to kind of not really get any easy opportunity to, to get a shot on target towards Matt Turner. It's a nice, comfortable save. This one here, I mean, Henry Kessler, for me, doesn't really do too much wrong here. It's just a bit of an unfortunate play. Obviously, he could have got a cleaner connection, yes, but the fact that he's got something on it has automatically stopped that ball going through and and getting through to, to the player behind him. Um, obviously, you know, we've got to possibly think that Brandon could get a bit closer to his player here. A bit slow to react, but does, does close down the, you know, the space quick enough, in my opinion, to obviously make the player not obviously think about 
of a shooting opportunity. And then a great, just a great, great block there. Bodies on the line. But I, can't, I can't remember who that was. I don't know if it was McNamara or, or Polster uh, with a block there. But uh, I think it was Tommy McEvon, if I remember. But just a great bit of defending from the Revolution unit there. Actually, I'm trying to rewind that back quickly, guys, because I think we just need to watch that bit again. I think things to learn from it, but, you know, still a good bit of defending. The, the, it starts off, you know, not, not the best, but... Uh, I mean, ball shot. No, this what that's not on it. Here we go. So obviously, inception just there. Trying to get our shape back. Good, good kind of tackle there from Pulse. It's unfortunate it's come to a player. What's happened? I've... So good ball in. I say Kester could have got a clean contact. Good kind of closing down to, by Brandon By um, to kind of make sure the option of shooting wasn't on there. Could have got a tackle in if he was a little bit quicker, but but then just look at that. Just look at this from oh, what a great block. Body on the line. That's what you like to see. That's what you like to see from your players. That is body on the line. Just putting it all. In for the team and just uh, and then just a, a hopeless shot and comfortable day for Matt Turner. Good header there, not one back. I mean, for for me again, Carlos here. I don't know he's not the biggest, strongest player, but he's not really doing enough to kind of get the ball. He's he's, he's I think he's thinking it's going to bounce over, which is good that he's kind of reading that, but he's he's read the situation wrong and it's put us in a little bit of pressure here. Good kind of hassling. Good tackle. Unfortunately, it's gone back to the player there. Just a, a really nice, well-worked ball and weighted ball through there. Uh, again, like uh, sometimes there's things that just happen in football games that you can't really defend against. This one here, if you look, just unfortunately, it's gone back to him. Kester's got to come here. He's got he's he's got to really because the other player's not closing him down. Uh, so Kester's got to come to put a challenge on here, which just gives this player an opportunity to. To be in space and yeah, it's just unfortunate. It's a well weighted pass. I mean, we try and get the defender back there, but it's um, luckily it's just off target. But sometimes you've, you've just got to kind of think that the situation has arose from an unfortunate mistake. Well, not really a mistake, was it? He just put the pulse just put a tackle in there and it's just gone to the to the uh, fire player and he's just reacted quickest. Uh, so sometimes there's not really much the defense could have done any, any better in that situation. It's just one of those. See, it's just like, I suppose, if anything, maybe looking back in this angle here, uh, obviously Kester kind of, I think Farrell thinks that the the this player here is possibly going to do a little bit more than they are. Um, Let's we'll slow this down. But really, from, from that point there, I think what's happened is Andrew Farrell's tried to step up there, got caught on his heels, and he's, he's not getting back there anyway. Is he? Uh, but it's... Um, yeah, so maybe Andrew Farrell could have done slightly more there, but again, it's quite a tough one to call because it's just a, a quite a nice bit of passage to play from the, the fire, some quick thinking, and um, just luckily for us on, on this day that it's kind of just dragged the shot wide. Maybe the fact that Dewan Jones is there, putting a bit of pressure on him, you know, is has is, is helped us out a bit there. We've got uh, another corner here, short corner this time, just creating a little bit more space, ball into the box, just trying to find... The head once more, but look at that, Kizza. What a debut that would have been for the lad. The um, and just a nice little chip in there as well, just uh, trying to create anything from from nothing. But just look at it from this angle here. I'm just going to slow this down as well, guys. Just look at that. Look at that run. He's 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 just he's just going full force at that. It's a good leap. I think it's Teal just in front of him. But ah, oh, Edward Kizza just so close on your Revolution debut to getting that winning goal and what a, I think, uh, uh, I don't even know what of the scenes that would have happened there. Just such a, look at it, it's just a good direct run. A great ball, just a, just putting a ball into a dangerous area sometimes is, I don't think he's kind of aiming for anyone in particular, just a great ball into a really dangerous area. No one's tracked him at all, poor defending for the Chicago Fire. Just a whisper, slightly, if he just waited it for that fraction of a second longer to drop, 
a little bit more and I think the Revolution could have uh, been on the, uh, you know, got an, that extra two points. Then in the dying moments, the dying moments, uh, a very strange decision, in my opinion, was made. Yes, 100%. This is a foul. Not a penalty, I thought. Well, you know, the first case, that you know, definitely started from outside the box. So I think the decision was right here. And, you know, I do think, I don't know, even then, it's it's, it's a soft foul, if anything. I think Dewan, I mean, he's, he's kind of, you know, he's, he's making up ground here. He's fast. He's kind of lent in. Ah, see there. Ah, clipped his heels, but again, no malice in that whatsoever. So, I mean, potentially the fact of giving the free kick, I can maybe agree with. I don't think it's any kind of dissent whatsoever because, again, what is he doing? I don't get what he's doing there that's that's even a, a yellow card. Um if I'm being perfectly honest, and that's no bias, that one isn't, I just don't get what it is. So the free kick, I can probably maybe agree with, possibly, a very soft, soft free kick, but okay. But then to to send Dewan Jones off, he's not even the last defender. Andrew Farrell had that covered. Um, it's just shock, shocking, really. Shocking decision, and luckily the free kick was just, Nice and, and welcoming for Matt Turner too. I don't, I'm not too sure what was going through his head there. Just nice and welcoming and, and, and nice, easy save for Matt Turner. But yeah, it's just a bit annoying the fact we've lost to Juan Jones now. And obviously the fact that Maffler wasn't, you know, fully fit. But hopefully, you know, that game within the, the Revolution 2 team was um, helped him. Obviously, we're getting some, for Matt fit, some match fitness. Obviously, playing a full 90 for the... No, it wasn't full 90, was it? No. But he, he, I think he played a good 70-odd minutes, I think, for the Revolution 2 team. Uh, and performed quite well, to be fair. So. But anyway, guys, that's my uh, analysis of the game. I uh, hope you kind of enjoyed this. If it is, then uh, obviously let me know in the comment section down below because I'll be making sure to kind of do this thing a little bit more, uh, more and more often. So, uh, guys, back to the show. If you have any questions, ask them down below now. How is everyone over in the UK feeling now that Manchester United plus City, Liverpool, Tottenham, Arsenal, and Chelsea have all withdrawn from the Super League. I heard things got pretty intense there for a couple of days. I'm hoping it's safe for me to root for Man United again. I mean, I am a Leeds United fan, so I'm, I should hate Man United, but I don't hate them, hate them. Um, they do annoy me a lot, but I wouldn't say I'm, I hate them, hate them. But um, but no, it's not, never safe for you to root for Manchester United. But yeah, no, it was, uh, it was, it was intense. Not gonna lie, uh, there was a lot. Uh, uh, quite pleasing to be fair in some aspects. Uh, you know, fans kind of getting their voice heard, and the media, just everyone, kind of all pointing their, in a way, negativity, uh, but not really negativity for the fact that they're negative towards an idea because of the right reason. So, um, negativity for positivity's sake, I suppose you could say. Uh, in in the right direction and all joining forces it was good even like you know politicians everyone just everyone getting involved to just make sure this just did not happen because it just did not need to happen and uh, again the, i'm gonna probably go on a little bit of a, of a rant based on this as well not kind of what's happened I've, I've kind of said what i needed to be said of i felt really bad for the fans and the the um the managers the players the staff and everything of the clubs because not pretty much i'm i'm, I'm probably certain that none of them knew anything that was happening behind the scenes. So, yeah, I did really feel sorry for them. And I'm really glad it's been resolved and it's not happening now. It's a great win for fans um, across any sporting, really, event. Um, but obviously, I was getting dragged into a lot of conversations and tagged in things because, obviously, I'm I'm an English man who supports an MLS team. And there's, there's people comparing it to, to MLS. And even this morning, I was watching Sky Sports News and, and Nigel de Jong, who's played in the MLS, was asked a question about it and stuff. And, you know, he was kind of saying of how it is comparable. Well, I get, I get, you know, there is comparisons to be drawn. It's a, it's a closed lead structure, no promotion and relegation, get it. But it's just built differently. Um, and I get, even if they, uh, even if it was a carbon copy of, of the actual completely carbon copy of what they did. So there was a draft and I don't know how that would work in that kind of situation, but salary caps and all that kind of stuff, the salary cap side of it probably thing would be easier to, to, um, to, to obviously put into this situation but 
so I, I do get why people are trying to draw comparisons on it because it, it's the closest thing that I suppose we've got to what they were trying to portray and trying to put into it. But it's it, no, obviously MLS wasn't born out out of that. It was just it was just nurtured from the fact that that's how American sport was anyway. So I suppose in a way you could say that maybe really all American sport has been built as a business, which isn't a bad thing. It's not, it's not like, you know, the end of the world that, that that's the reason why it was kind of done, but there still is a competitive side to it because, you know, from the MLS, while I get there's no relegation, so it doesn't really matter even if you finish bottom of the league, which is the one aspect I don't really like of it, that there is no consequence at all. If anything, you kind of get, well, you get, and again, it's it's trying to make the whole system fair. I, get, I completely get it. I'm not not knocking it or anything like that. Just giving my honest opinion here, guys. That, that if you come last, you get first choice of the next kind of crop of good players coming through the, the collegiate system. I like I like it. I love the super job. I absolutely love it. It's the one point of the year I I really not just the one, but one of the points of the year I really look forward to. I look forward to seeing, you know, watching some of these young collegiate players coming through and reading about them and seeing who, you know, oh, who, who, what team's going to pick up who and the whole kind of drama behind it and everything. It was great. Last year's was great. Everyone thought we knew exactly who the revolution were picking. We all thought it was was Bauer. They even hinted a little 24, little kind of nugget of of a gif out there. And then all of a sudden we, we pull Edward Kizzer because, that, you know, we didn't think Kizzer was going to drop that low. We thought he was going to get picked up before then. And, and... It's all that kind of stuff. It just really adds to the kind of narrative of the, of the league and just adds for great stories and all that kind of stuff. But there is there is still kind of... The competitive side is still there. And again, it's probably because it's been around for so long. And, I, and I'm not saying that the Super League probably wouldn't have had that eventually. But to begin with, for, for teams to be pulled out of a league system they currently played in, to then be thrown in different rule sets, I think it's just different. And it, and it is, it's just greedy. If the MLS was... Like every other league system, and then all of a sudden converted to it, I think there would have been massive backlash. But because it was always been this way, it it's just different. In my opinion, it's not the same. It's it's comparable, yes, but it's not it's not the same. I mean, it might be like a, a separate thing to talk about, but I'm just going to end it there. And I kind of hope I kind of answered your question, Richard. Sorry, I went off on a tangent, mate, but uh, that's what it is sometimes. Uh, and another note, he kind of asked as well, kind of a second part to it. I'd love to visit England one day um, after, obviously, this pandemic is over. Can you tell me a few things about that? Sorry, let me just read this again. It's kind of second part to his question is, on another note, he'd love to visit England, obviously, once all this pandemic stuff's over and it's safe to do so. And he's wanting me to uh, tell him a few things about it that an American like him wouldn't know. Um, I probably should know some stuff, shouldn't I? But oh, I don't really. I'm going to be really honest. Um... I mean, it's it, it rains, uh, but you you already know that. Um, we do have we do have some 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 really really good cities, but what I would say is that whilst it depends kind of what you want to come to do, but whilst a lot of Americans would, I'm not I'm trying to put everyone in the same kind of bracket here as well. So please do not take offence, and I apologise if I do offend anyone. But while I suppose I work, actually, you know, let me rephrase this to to not cause as much offence. Still going to probably cause a little bit, but not as much. Whilst most tourists, when coming to any place, so even this includes English people, probably more so English people than anything, they will go across and, and visit the tourist traps because that's what people want you to see. They want you to go and spend your money in London, Birmingham, Manchester, Liverpool. Whilst they're great, they are they are good. They've got some really, really good things to see and obviously there's a lot of good architecture there, a lot of good museums and all that kind of stuff as well. For me, that's not... Obviously, I don't go to them places. I have been, and they're great. They are good. They have a lot, lot, of, lot of fun. But I wouldn't say they're the best places to for, to go. I mean, for me, uh, we we go to Wales a lot. Wales, again, like a lot of places, has its not so nice places, but has some absolutely beautiful places. Scotland as well, and a lot of kind of Middle England as well. Um, just the countryside for me is what I think wins in England. I think we have some great like. Uh, I suppose you'd say hiking trails, some great walks, some great National Trust places. Um, if you want to learn about England more, I'd go to the National Trust Museums, you know, places and 
and uh, of note, it's it's a lot more than just. I, I, I get going to the big city. Sometimes you lose a lot. You can learn a lot. You can learn a lot about the industrial uh, revolution. You know, in in Liverpool and Birmingham and all that kind of stuff uh, in Dudley. There's a lot to do, a lot to see. But I wouldn't say it's the best. That's all I'd say. So if I was going to suggest anything, I would just look for National Trust places. You can learn a lot from them as well. So search up the National Trust and join. Well, actually, no, don't join because that would be a waste of your money. Um, but that's it for the questions. I only, only got the one. Well, certainly it was two off one person. But uh, thank you, Richard, for your uh, questions. And I uh, hope you're all safe and well, buddy. And, uh, yeah, if you have got any questions, guys, as I mentioned at the start, just, just drop them down in the comment section below or get in contact with me over on Twitter at UK. Right, on to the next segment, and it's time for that lovely jingle that you all will grow to love. Who's that? Ready, man. So, obviously, who is that ready, man? So, I asked last time round, the question was, when asked who his favourite football player, which revolution player, well, I won't do it as a quote as such, but sentiment was that growing up, his favourite football player was his older brother, but if he was... To name one professional football player, it would have to be Alex Song. No one guessed it, so I will reveal now who that Remy Man was. Who's that Remy Man? It's Andrew Farrell. That's right, it was Louisiana's final. Is it Louisiana? I'm going to get this wrong, isn't it? I'm pretty certain he's from Louisiana. Uh, finest, Andrew Farrell. Uh, it was back in 2013 that interview took place. So, yeah, quite a long time ago. So, uh, no one got it right. So, and, uh, but now this week's. Who's that? Ready, man. What was it like playing in front of the home fans here in Foxborough for the first time? That was awesome. I mean, they, they were singing their hearts out for me, and, and uh, it was just a really special moment because for two years I sat on the side and had to watch them sing for other people, and, and uh, they welcomed me with open arms, and uh, it was really just a special moment. I don't know what they were singing like. Right, so we move on to the prediction time. But first of all, before we actually get into predictions, I'm just going to give you my take on what I think the Revolution should line up with with uh, the game against DC. Uh, then I'll move on to what I think Bruce will pick. So my lineup would be Matt Turner in goal, a back four of Maffler at left back, Kessler, Farrell and Brandon by. I think most people probably would go with that. Maybe De La Garza right back. Who, who knows? But I think I think most people will probably agree potentially with that one. Uh, in front of them two, I've got uh, Matt Polster and Martial. Uh, hopefully Martial is back fighting fit. Uh, on the right-hand side, I've got Tyjane Buchanan. On the left-hand side, I've got Carlos Heal. Obviously, them two will be interchangeable and just roam around when they can do. Up top, I've got Adam Bootska. And then supporting Adam Bootska up top, I've got Kizza. Because previous of what I mentioned, I think, I think that will be ideally what we kind of go with. Uh, Tristanthon would make the bench. And, you know, we'd have the likes of Bumby on the bench as well, Gustavo Bow, which probably, I don't know how well that would go down having Gustavo Bow on the bench, but I've just, this is what I think, is my opinion, guys. Um, and then, you know, we've got the likes of De La Garza uh, on the bench as well and Captain. So I think, you know, it, it, I just, that's my opinion. Uh, fight me. Fight me in the comment section. Uh, what I believe Bruce will go with, though, is I think he'll go with Matt Turner. I think the back four will be the same. I think it'll be Maffler Kessler. No, actually, no, sorry, I don't, I don't. Scrap that. Matt Turner, Maffler, Kessler, Farrell, De La Garza, I think he'll go. I think he will go with Polster and Martial in the middle. I think he'll start Carlos Heel on the right-hand side. I think he'll start, for some unknown reason, Boateng out on the left-hand side, and they'll start with Adam Butzka and Gustavo Bo up top. Predictions for the scoreline? I'm going to go big again, guys. I went 2-0 last time around, and I'm going to go 2-0 again, because I think the Revolution are going to do it. I think what the... The hardest thing for the Revolution will be is scoring. I think DC will sit back and look to his on the counter-attack. But I think we've got enough now about us to kind of get this job done. I think we'll have enough on the bench, if it's not working, to kind of change things up, hopefully, and get the job done. 2 nil. I'm going to go for a, another Adam Butzka goal. And then second goal will come from the man, the myth, the legend that is Carlos. He'll free-kick magic, baby. 2-0 um, to the Revolution. In terms of top goal scorers and stuff this season, I'm going to go for Adam. I, I think this, this hopefully, from what I've seen of him in that first game, he was busy, he, was, he just looked good. He looked like he's he's finally getting there and we're working towards his strengths. He's learned what 
you know, the, how the team move and all that kind of stuff, and then turn the team up to how he plays. And I think it's going to be a really, really, really good partnership. So Adam Brooks, I'm going to go for top goal scorer, top assist. So I'll have to go for Carlos Hill because how can you, how can you not basically? Um, defensive player of the year, I think we'll go for um, Henry Kessler as well. Um, because Mr. Longleg can make that. Although he didn't look as accomplished last time round, we'll just we'll you know he's, everyone's allowed one off game. But Henry, you've had your one now, mate. So crack on, buddy. But anyway, guys, uh, that's it for today's episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, uh, I think it's probably going to be a long one because I know the, the one segment, the analyst one, was quite long when I recorded that one. So, uh, but hopefully you guys have still made it through this far anyway, and uh, I appreciate anyone that has done. So. I hope you stay safe. I hope you guys have an amazing time at Gillette Stadium. One day, guys, I know I keep saying this and I've been saying it for the last three years now, I, I, I will make it out to Gillette Stadium. But obviously there's a pandemic at the moment, so I can't see it being this season. But who knows, 2022 hopefully will be a better year for everyone. And uh, But stay safe, guys. I want to see you and hear you at Gillette Stadium. I'll, I just, I, I'm so looking forward to it. Unfortunately, I am working the next day, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to stay up to watch that one, which is a pain in the backside, but I have got to be up at, like, I think the game's at 1am, and I've got to be up for work, to leave for work by, like, 5am, so yeah, I, I can't see me functioning on two hours sleep. But I hope you guys have an amazing time. I want to see as many videos and posts and pictures as I can do, and, uh, yeah, just have a great one, guys, and I will catch you guys in the next one.